Hi everyone and welcome. Today's topic is stack buffer overflow. While a generic buffer overflow means that we are using more memory than the buffer is allowing us to use, so basically we are overrunning the boundaries of the buffer, the stack buffer overflow is a special case because it happens within the stack. So happens when stack based dynamic variables overflow. So let's imagine that we are operating within the stack in here. And that's a typical C program. If you don't know C, that's, that's fine. I'll try to be super clear. So we are declaring an array, five elements array, right? And that's a variable. Now you are trying to insert one more element, the sixth element within an array that only allows for five elements, right? And then you have a similar situation here because you're trying to extract the sixth element out of an array that only allows for five. And here, you declare an integer, but then you are trying to fit a value which is much bigger than the integer can contain. And although some of these errors will be catched by the compiler, so you, you will never be able to actually run this program, I think this is a good example for you to understand what uh, stack buffer overflow really is. Stack buffer overflow can make your program crash because the stack, which contains the function return address, stack based arguments, and preserved registers, is overwritten. And we have covered already those concepts. I'm gonna drop a link for you so you're gonna be able to find the correct video. Now, those start uncalling conventions that were covered in the previous video make programs flows predictable which enables ill-intentioned ones to inject code in order to take over the system or damage it. Now, on the left, we have a fully working program, no problem here, no stack overflow at all. Here we have a problem, as you can see, the array is overrunning the boundaries and the same is doing this variable over here. So this array is actually overwriting the RBP and it might also be overwriting the RIP. Now, this problem is less severe than this one. When RIP is overwritten, functions are not able to return to the calling routines. When RIP is modified, malicious code might be executed instead if the program interacts with external components. If the platform or program allows for stack buffer overflow, the following are risk scenarios. Untrusted users entering data required by the program. So the user might end up triggering a stack buffer overflow just by entering, for example, a large amount of data or text or whatever, and he or she might end up gaining access to the server. Now, untrusted files being read by the program also might cause a stack buffer overflow. Same things can be said about host and networks sending data to the program. Assembly code to be executed after a stack buffer overflow is generally typed in hexadecimal to avoid issues with special characters. Many tools, including the Linux shell, allow users to type using hexadecimal. On a Linux shell, hold down Ctrl Shift, type U, type the code, and then release all keys and press space. Let's try. As you can see, 
after I press U, we can see U with an underline and then a one, for example. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. It immediately gets converted to the actual symbol, right? And then, for example, hmm? sorry. Um, yeah, and so on. Now, this is nothing, but I could actually write a program. Like, for example, I could write a program in assembly that it would be opening a shell on a remote host for me. Now, in fact, using hexadecimal assembly code, malicious users might try opening a shell on your system. Malicious users will need to guess the location of RIP through trial error. The RIP will need to point at the address of the malicious code, although the exact address is not required as multiple NOP, no operation, can be used. Example. So this is NOP, the 09, which means that this instruction is telling the CPU to do absolutely nothing. So every time the CPU reads 09, move to the next instruction, the next instruction, next instruction, and so on until we end up here reading the malicious code. So that's pretty clever, right? So we have the RIP, RIP location has been completely damaged and also the RBP location. As this is not a course about software penetration testing, let's have a look at some technologies that can help us to protect ourselves from this sort of attacks, because eventually we might end up running into this software. Now, we have ASLR, which is a software protection, which works by randomizing the location where executables stuck IP are loaded into memory, which means that by knowing a location of any of these, you will no longer able to guess the remaining ones. You will no longer able to have a, a NOP slides, right? Now, on Linux machines, is generally turned turn on by default. And if you want to turn it off, you will need to run this line of code. Maybe if you want to run some penetration testing and you want to turn it off and this one will have to be zero. When you want to turn it on, it will have to be one or two. Generally, two is preferred. There are small differences between one and two. You might find it on the documentation of your operating system. Now on Windows, from Vista onward, this technology is also integrated and it has to be enabled on the application. So when you build your application in Visual Studio, you have to use the proper flags in order to turn this technology on. One more protection, software protection, which detects stack buffer overflow by inserting random values into the RIP. Execution is stopped if these values are modified or deleted. If you're building your own software and you're using GCC, you're going to be using this flag over here to disable this check, right? You might want to do that if you're trying, if you're building security software or anything else, right? If you are on Windows and you're using Visual Studio, you're going to be finding the correct option in Visual Studio. One more level of security, because generally all of these technologies are installed and turned on by default on all system. So that execution prevention, it's an hardware and software security level, which prevents stack buffer overflow by marking memory areas as either executable or not executable. 
So if you were to be marking this area as a not executable, the malicious code will never run. Right? They might still be able to damage the RIP, the RIP, the RBP, but again, they won't be able to gain control. If you wish to turn this feature off on Windows, you might need to modify the system properties or you need to use this command line over here. And that will be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed my class. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.